name is Terry Campbell. I'm the general manager of Americot, and just appreciate the opportunity to come and visit with you uh, this afternoon. And thank you, Jared. Uh, we're headquarters in, Lu in Lubbock, Texas. Uh, we were founded in 1987. We're a family-owned business. A matter of fact, our our owner is a, is a cotton farmer, raises cattle, small grains, uh, very involved in, in farming today. Uh, we breed cotton varieties. We uh, do variety development through trade integration. We use Monsanto's trade platform, and we market our cotton varieties uh, across the cotton belt. Uh, in the past, we, or we currently offer Bolgar 2 Roundup Ready Flex, as well as the new Extend Flex uh, with Bolgar 2, as well as just Extend Flex varieties. Uh, our cotton varieties are distributed through national distribution, uh, national distributors and regional distributors across the, the cotton bed. Uh, thought I'd throw up a picture of our uh, processing and storage facility. Uh, this is in Gaines County, Texas. The actual delinding plant is this structure here, and the rest of the structure you see around is for uh, finished goods and, uh, and fuzzy good uh, storage there. Um, would like to uh, point out we have four sales reps uh, in Georgia, Adam Anderson, Josh Gravitt, Jeff Sandifer, and Michael Williams, and all those guys are, are here today. And Hopefully if I mess something up real bad, they can help uh, straighten it up here before we leave. Uh, getting into the varieties, I want to introduce uh, about three early mids and then one uh, mid to full variety. We'll just jump into the early mids real quick. Uh, first one is uh, the next gen 3405. Again, early mid, high turnout, uh, semi smooth leaf. It's probably closer to a smooth leaf, honestly. Uh, good seedling vigor. It's a medium plant height. Okay, this is going to be uh, a variety that's probably going to require very little uh, picks as far as that goes. Uh, decent fiber package, not the best we have, but, but a decent fiber package as well. Uh, where, where would you plant? You know, if it's, a, if it's an early, early mid, we're thinking you know late, uh, late planted or a double crop situation. We've seen it do good on irrigated and, and dry land, and, and haven't really noticed any soil types that, that it stands out in, or you wouldn't want to wouldn't want to put it in. Uh, jumping on to the 3406. Uh, what I might want to point out about 3406, it's uh, it's out of the same family as our next gen 1511, which y'all grown. Uh, here for several years. We actually introduced it in, in 2011 and uh, it's, it's our most widely adapted cotton variety uh, that we offer today. Uh, excellent yield potential across the cotton belt as well as uh, a good fiber package to boot. It's a semi-smooth leaf, uh, good seedling vigor, and again a medium plant height. I, I would say it wouldn't require a lot of, of picks management. And and looking at you know some character some more characteristics about that variety and where it would fit, uh, it has an eight for a fusarium wilt rating out of uh, the extension or the testing program out of Alabama. So we don't have a true nematode resistant variety. The root knot nematodes infect the roots. One thing that can attack the plant when that happens is fusarium, and uh, a lot of cases it's fusarium that's that's taking your plant out, and uh, we have a really good fusarium wilt rating on that variety as well. Again, uh, widely adapted across the, the cotton belt. Uh, this product has done really well this year for us. Mid-South, West Texas, uh, Arizona, uh, and across across the board. Again, here I think it'd be a late planted or a double crop uh, product, irrigated or dry landing. We'll look at a few uh, data charts here in a little bit. Uh, I guess we'll do it right now. Uh, what we did uh, is just pull down uh, this are the OVT trials from this year and just pull down a set of varieties that are considered to be the early mids and just kind of stack them up to, to see where we fit in there against those other products. So if it's bold, like the 812 is bolded, 1983 is bold, that's bold. Uh, that was the highest yielder uh, numerically amongst these uh, uh, six that we're comparing to at that location, but they're not statistically different, okay? They were within the LSD. Uh, if it's green uh, and bolded, then it was actually numerically the highest yielding variety in that test location. Uh, uh, what I thought was interesting, if, if uh, I think there's six tests here and numerically about four different winners, so you know nothing ever wins across the board. 
But uh, anyway, just just kind of a, a little lineup of of uh, you know consistency. There's some really good products on the market, y'all. Uh, well, I think we're all blessed across the cotton belt with the with the varieties and, and the way they're performing this year. But uh, but anyway, just just want to kind of summarize you know how we did compared to some other varieties. Uh, picture of some uh, 3406. Okay, uh, this uh, is again at the, the 3522. The three uh, indicates that it's an early mid as well. Uh, this was in some new strains test. Okay, so uh, uh, early mid maturing variety. We, what we see out of it is really good yield potential. We want to test it here and, and see how it does. You know where a guy would want plant an early mid in this environment. Uh, again, it's a, a semi-smooth leaf, a good seedling vigor, medium plant high picks management. It's probably going to be minimum and, and a decent fiber package a, as well. Uh, and, and sure enough, in uh, looking at how it's performed uh, in the state, uh, at Midville and in Plains, it was among uh, top performers. In, in yield in those two new strains tests. So we're excited to get some out this year with some growers and uh, see how it's going to perform on the farm. Uh, in the literature, guys, it's, uh, it was tested as this 7824. If, if you see it in there, that's, that was its testing number. Uh, just threw in a production field of it uh, out in West Texas uh, because I like pictures, so I just threw something in there. Okay, let's get down to the to the meat and potatoes, if you will. Pro our variety of choice in, in South Georgia is going to be the next gen 5007, okay? The five would indicate in our lineup it's a medium to full, uh, similar in, in maturity to a, to a product we uh, recently had, the 5315 mid to full. Uh, you know, it's, it's a smooth leaf and uh, good bigger now this is a taller plant okay this is probably going to be more like a 499 in, in managing it uh, with your picks applications a good fiber package and uh, and uh, so just just you know where, where would you place this product uh, and how it's done it, we, we see uh, good results in both dry land and and pivots being aggressive growing plant probably going to work well in that uh, and on those light sandy soils where you want to grow stock, I think it's going to perform well there. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute, but on the UGA on farm evaluations, y'all probably here uh, have heard the talks earlier, but we were among the top performers in Cook County, uh, Blakely County, and Pulaski, and above average in Appling, Tombs, and Montgomery, and, and Bullock County. So we're getting a good look out. It got quite a few bags out in this area last year. And, getting pretty good response from, from the growers. Uh, throw up another one of these hideous tables for you to, to look at. But in this case, we lined up more of those mid to full varieties, products that we think the 5007 is, is more, you know, it's going to compete with, okay? And uh, same type of scenario, you know, in Midville, the late mature and dry land test, it happened to have the highest yield and numerically uh, topped the test at that. and. Uh, kind of a similar a situation here. You know, that was the top yielder in that location and, and, and so forth. But just, just kind of to give you a picture of how it's done, you know, relative to some other varieties with a similar mature. A uh, picture of, of a field down in Tombs County, Culpa County, and uh, testimonial uh, first-time user, uh, Charles. Uh, Collins made uh, 1,400 pounds with some this year, and, and he was happy with it. We certainly appreciate him trying it for the first time. And uh, I just wanted to highlight here the next gen 1511. We still have it available. Uh, probably have a two-year supply of it. Uh, what I do want to mention here is uh, we went down 50 bucks a bag uh, on that product. And matter of fact. Uh, uh, on the uh, Bolgar 2 Extend Flex products, we went down $20 a bag from last year. You won't hear that from very many cotton seed companies, or probably any seed companies tell you they went down on the price. What we were trying to do is eat up some of that tech fees, what we were trying to do, knowing that you know cotton prices are poor and, and who in the heck wants to pay another $30, $36 out here 
a bag. So we were trying to help, you know, eat up some of that uh, that additional tech fee cost in, in our pricing decisions this year. Uh, I'll uh, I'll just leave this slide up there, and I'll be glad to take any questions <laughs> you might have.